स्मृते नमस्ते चरणारिंदा राधा अरविंद नेत्र स्मरा राधा मधुरा वजा राधा करुणा भरद्रम दमस्ते गतिर्न का
Little Krishna's white teeth, the series of moons, were enveloped by the reddish hue reflecting from his lips. His two eyes, resembling restless partridges, were full of tears. His lotus hands shone as they vigorously sloshed yogurt here and there. In this way, when the half churned yogurt from the pot covered the entire floor, another type of festival manifested. Just then, his eyes caught sight of a pot of fresh butter hanging from the ceiling in the adjoining, adjoining room. He ran to the door, slid the latch aside and pushed it open. And then, moving the door stopper back into place, he slipped into the room and closed the door behind him. He used a nearby cot as a step, lowered the pot of butter and started to eat it. Thereafter, he took the remaining butter and secretly sneaked out to the window of that room. Meanwhile, Madhya Yashoda had stopped the milk from boiling over into the fire. So here, Jeep Goswami says, actually, he took the butter and he left the room. Sometimes it's described that Krishna is in that very same room, on top of the grinding water, as he's stealing Madhya Yashoda comes. So here, Jeep Goswami is given a different version that he steals the butter and actually exits that room through the window. That's why Krishna is an expert in this. He, wherever he, know, he knows, like thieves, they're coming through the windows, they leave the windows. So Krishna here also came in through the door, but now he's exiting the window, escape, escaping the scene. Meanwhile, Mother Yashoda had stopped the milk from boiling over into the fire. The milk cooled down into a simmer within seconds, and she took it off the stove. She dashed back to where she had left her son, only to find that he was gone. However, seeing evidence of her son's activity, she laughed in mixed anger and amusement. At first, out of suspicion, she became perturbed. But then, but then Yogamaya manifested an aerial voice which gave her knowledge and made her laugh. The aerial, the aerial voice said, Feeling hungry and thirsty, your little bumblebee made a hole in the bud of a lotus flower that had no pollen. When he saw that it was merely water that, that began to dip from that flower, he became disappointed and went to another lotus flower where he had found a big supply of honey. The import is that in order to get fresh butter, your son performed all these deeds. He first broke the churning pot, but did not find butter there. He then found it hanging in the next room. You have displayed your intelligence by deciding to leave your baby and go pull down the milk. But if you can calm the anger of your child, you will receive even more praise. Upon hearing the aerial voice, Mother Yashoda laughed and followed the thief's conspicuous foot, yogurt footprint to the next room. She managed to force the doors open. Then she stepped inside, only to behold her son's other matchless mischief. Tracing his path of escape, she finally spotted him, his eyes restless with fear. He was thinking, I have just stolen fresh butter. If my mother sees me here, how will I face her? His eyes moved about so frantically that they seemed to be on the verge of leaping into his ears. In other words, his eyes and his ears were watching out for his mother. Mother Yashoda saw him sitting restless eyed atop the grinding mortar that he had overturned with all his strength, feeding butter to the monkeys. Astonished by this, she smiled softly. She quickly crept up behind her guilty son. He said that a wealthy person only has two eyes, but a thief has a hundred. That is, to, that is to say, a wealthy person only has two eyes to look after his treasures, but a thief has a hundred to spot that person's wealth and steal it. Although a person may, extremely carefully, may be extremely careful to protect his wealth, it is not inaccessible to a thief. We think that we know so much, but it's like sometimes people that think, oh, I am so clever. But they don't realize that people, other people are just as clever as you, even more clever. It's like a strong person thinks he's really strong. But then there's always someone who's more stronger than him, right? There's always someone who can beat that person. So, there is the pride that we sometimes we think, oh, I am this, I am that. But there's always something better than you. So even though you think, oh, I, my wealth is so safe. But the, the thief are called thief for what reason? They know how to steal. They know where you're hiding your wealth. They know how to extract it. This is their job. This is their profession. They know the art of spotting your wealth and finding it. 
People are clever. Oh, I'll put my money in some place where I'll hide it in blind sight. I'll hide it here and there. But they know all these tricks. They're more clever than you. It's like police investigators who investigate crime. They, because they investigate crime on a daily basis, it has become like second nature to them. They begin to think like the criminals. And they learn all the tricks. They go through so many cases. They have so much knowledge, so many examples that nothing is new to them anymore. So when they're, they're investigating a criminal or crime scene, then they know what to look for and then what are the symptoms. And then they know how, what symptom indicates what. This way they're able to very easily break down the crime scene and catch the criminals and persecute them. It's like there's a science that is called um, oh, I forget what's the science called, but basically you study the speech of a person and by studying the speech of a person you can understand what the person is saying, what activities he has done, what he's going to do, everything. So they use this they use this for crime cases. Someone has done a criminal, someone has done a crime and they giving a confession or they're giving their testimony. Based on their speech and the testimony, the person can understand if the person did the crime, not only did he do the crime, where he did it, when he did it, how he did it, and what means he did it. It's become such a science. Because they've, they've, they've come to the conclusion that every criminal in their speech, there's always an embedded confession. Somehow or another, they'll, they'll reveal their crime in their speech. It's just the nature, it's, I don't know, it's the guilty nature of the Atma to confess one's sins. So, even when they're trying to hide it, but even when they're lying, through their lying, they're actually they're telling their whole crime. It's actually a very astonishing science. And then the people who are expert in that, they just by hearing what you're saying, they'll be able to reveal everything what you're saying. So they use that to their benefit. So here, it is, Jeet Goswami has given this example that a wealthy person has two eyes, but a thief has a hundred. He knows where your wealth is. He knows where you're hiding it. So Krishna hears that, uh, he is the butter thief. He is the most expert thief. He knows where the person is hiding their butter, where they're storing it. Everything. And therefore he's going house to house and he's stealing his butter. By nature, monkeys are proud of exhibiting their strength. But today their bellies were fully satisfied. So when they saw Mother Yashoda advancing, holding a stick covered with cloth, they immediately scampered up the nearby trees. This alerted Krishna to what was happening, and he also fled. When you go on Parikram Maharaj, sometimes you see the monkeys, they see you coming, they jump on the tree and they shake. They jump on the electric pole, they shake. Some of them show, oh, I am so strong. I am this and that. I am also something. But today the monkeys, they're seeing Mother Yashoda coming, they're running. Now their bellies were, they're fully satisfied. They're, it's like the monkeys in blood. Here, they're very, very happy. People are buying bananas, chickpeas, so many things, bread, they're giving. Why they think, oh, Hanuman Seva. Serving the monkeys like serving Ram, serving Hanuman. And they feel, in some ways, sometimes you see there's so much banana on the ground they don't even touch anymore, the monkeys. Only in Vrindavan you can see these things, go over them. Now the monkeys, they're very, very happy. So they saw Mother Yashoda coming, they ran away quickly. Krishna then realized, oh, my mother is coming. So he began to run also. Seeing her son fleeing, Mother Yashoda broke into a run and began to chase him. A shower of flowers fell from her grave. Oh, king of thieves, she loudly called, where are you going? Stop, stop. Hearing this, Sri Krishna uttered a faint cry and a smile appeared on his face. Enchanting his beauty, Mother Yashoda ran quickly after him. So Krishna is, so why he smiled in his face? Because He's like when you do something wrong, sometimes some pride comes there. Oh, I've done this wrong thing. I've done this bad thing. My mother showed her, she put me down. She made me upset. Now that I've broken the pot, I've given her back something to her, you know. Now he's happy. Now she's noticed. 
Now she's now she knows. The next time she will not put me down and leave me. Otherwise, I am capable of doing all this kind of mischief. And this is what Krishna is thinking. This smile has come in his face. Mother Yasoda ran quickly after him, but that smile quickly goes. When oh, when you, when the parent catches the child, then no more smile. Then crying too much. Oh, why? Because the realization comes. Now the beating is going to come. Now the sticks going to come. That time crying too much to avoid the try to avoid the punishment. But doing the mischief that time very oh very happy. But the re, when have to face the results, oh then not so happy, not so much happiness there anymore. The mother Yashoda ran quickly after him. Although she came close, she could not catch him. It was as if two clouds, one big and one small, were being chased by the wind from west to east across the sky. The larger cloud unable to catch up with the smaller one. Similarly, this mother could not catch her son. When the wind is blowing the clouds, the, the big cloud cannot catch the small cloud. When the wind is pushing both, but the big cloud is more mass, so how can it catch the lighter or smaller cloud which is running? So Mother Yashoda sees the body is heavy. She is running after Krishna, but she is unable to catch. He has said the footnote said they are both big compared to clouds. Why? Because their complexions are like rain clouds, both. Krishna and Madhesha, they both have this sham varna, like a rain cloud. Therefore, they seem like two clouds in the sky, going from west to east, chasing each other. Little Krishna was confident that his mother would never pursue him beyond the main gate, for she would then be seen running in public. Therefore, he intentionally ran in that direction. Mother Yashoda knew that, it, that at that time of the day, no one would be outside the gate, so she just kept chasing him. Why is Deepavali? Everyone's in their house, going to their village, going here and there. Everyone's celebrating and preparing for their festival. So she realized, oh, no one is there. She looked first, and then she quickly ran after catch Krishna. As long as Krishna ran without looking back, his mother was un unable to catch him. But as soon as he turned his head back in fear, she caught him by his hand. So he's running fast, but then, in order to, when looking back, then you cannot run so fast, no? Otherwise uh, you fall over, you have to slow down. So when he slowed down to turn around, then Mother Yashoda caught him. He frantically moved his eyes about as if trying to continue to run away. As if trying to continue running away. He began crying in an attempt to reduce Mother Yashoda's anger. And out of impudence, he started trembling artificially. But he did not give up. But he did not give up his childish plans. So he's crying, and he starts shaking so much, making this drama as if he's suffering too much. In India, you can see sometimes the children here they are very smart. They are much more mature than their ages. In the West, you don't see it so much, but here in India, you see it very often. Very small children, and they are very. Very intelligent, they can speak so many clever things and they are years above their age. So Krishna is like this, he's only a small boy but already he's pretending to tremble and he's making so and everything. He wants to reduce his mother's anger. Whenever she forcefully held his face so that she could look at him in the eye, Sri Krishna turned his face in such a way as to wipe the oily gloss of butter from his mouth and make it look dry. So his mother is trying to look at him, see, but then he's turning his face and he's trying to cover up his, the evidence. To attending him, Mother Yashoda said, Oh Krishna, you have given me so much trouble. Before you steal from your home, first look at this stick in my hand. When she saw her lotus eyed son's terror upon hearing these words, she particularly tossed the stick aside. So now Krishna became really afraid. When she mentioned the stick, then he became like, he realized, oh, now beating is coming. But then Mother Yashoda, her heart so soft, seeing his son so terrified, then she threw the stick away. Don't beat me, Mother, Krishna beseeched her. The queen of blood scorned him. But you are a thief, a thief. Laughing to her, herself, she suddenly and forcefully instigated a quarrel with him. Ah, you are the king of thieves, Chor. Krishna protested, no, Mother. Chor took birth in your dynasty, not mine. The villagers put now said, in the dynasty of Yashoda's father, there was a goat named Chorgosh. The literal meaning of Chor is thief. 
Thus, Sri Krishna denounced Yashoda's dynasty, considering himself to be exclusively to his father's dynasty. So this Gopa, his name was Chorgo. So Chor means thief. So, oh, in mine, in your dynasty there's thief, but not in mine. Why would we have a Chor thief in our home? In this way, Mother Yashoda and her protesting son argued with each other. Oh, really? Well, who broke the pot of yogurt? She asked. She again inquired. Krishna replied, the Supreme Lord, he was punishing you. But, she continued, who fed butter to the monkeys? He who created them. No, she exclaimed, I suspect that you always feast with great relish on the fresh butter we prepare for use in religious sacrifices. Mother Yashoda scolded her son as a shibuddha thief, but finally her heart softened. She laughed with anger and said, just admit, just admit you have theft. Give up your arrogance. Why is his court? Broken part, his footprints, butter in his mouth, everything. Just admit, just admit. Thus pressed by his mother, Sri Krishna burst into tears. Look, Ma, he sobbed. When you anxiously ran to save the milk, your ankle bell struck the pot of yogurt and broke, and it broke. How is this my fault? And the monkeys, he continued, were inspired by the Supreme Lord to sneak into the house and steal. When they began talking, taking the butter, I caught them. What did I do wrong? And then he retorted, The stick in your hand frightened me, so even though I am completely innocent, I fed like a thief. You saw I was so afraid, but you, but still you mercifully just chased me, all for no reason. And they saying, I know it looked very bad. Like the monkeys were there, and the butter was being stolen, everything. But in reality, I wasn't doing anything. I was trying to catch the monkeys. And seeing your stick, I understood that you had misunderstood the situation. Therefore I ran and out of fear. But really I am innocent. Mother Yashoda spoke as if lamenting. Oh, you are you who are the king of those skilled in argument, she said. You are the best of thieves. Although you are the son of Shibraj Raj, the most noble of men, your nature has become like a monkey's, because you are a fond of them. <coughs> when fearful, when fearful Sri Krishna heard this, he pointed to the forest and said, If I am a monkey, then I will live in the forest which slightly frightened his mother. She was thinking, oh, Krishna will now leave me, run away, go to the forest. Who knows, she thought, this arrogant boy could easily put his threat into action. To keep him from running into the forest, I must tie him up. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for me to single-handedly manage my household duties and this child. So she thought, oh, maybe is there some truth to what she had some doubt came in her mind. Is there some truth to her, what, she, what he's saying? Is it really that he went into the forest? Then she felt that, like doubtful. Okay, I better tie him. Because otherwise, how will I be able to do my household duties at the same time be worrying about him that he's going to run away? This, it actually, young children, they do this actually. I remember when we were in Gurukul in, in Australia, that sometimes we were in Gurukul, we used to run from the Gurukul. We used to go to the, here and there and do all these kind of things. For no reason at all. Oh, just like we want to get away from here, then all day running away from school in the forest here and there. Then people would send so many people searching here and there. It's like for no reason. So Krishna, if he's saying I run to the forest, then Mother is thinking, oh, maybe he will run. Children, they sometimes say, what they do, there's no guarantee. Why? The children have no mind, no sense. Anything they can do. They may run away, they might do this, they may do that. They do stupid things. So Krishna is saying, because he's saying I will go to the forest. So then Mother Yashoda said, oh, maybe there's some truth, and maybe he may go to the forest. So, turning to Krishna, she openly said, You thief, you restless boy, you who bewilder one and all by the charm of your flickering eyes, why don't you simply accept my prohibitions? Look, I will tie you up and then quickly return to the house. If you have any strength left, you can show it to me by trying to steal something else. <coughs> As she started to bind him, his eyes became moist, and in fury he began to loudly cry out, Oh, Mother Rohini, he shrieked, where have you gone with my big brother? Because you are not here today, this mother is tying me up, quickly come. Now he's calling for Rohini. Oh, you come save me. Where are you? They think, oh, Mother Rohini's heart will be soft, she'll come and, she'll come and give me some protection. Since 
he is trying to reason with Yashoda and Mother Yashoda, but she is seeing Mother Yashoda is not coming to any reason. Now he is calling out for Rohini. Since she, Rohini was far away, she could not hear his cries. But the ladies from neighboring homes who had previously complained about Krishna and who had chastised him did hear his cries. They informed each other of the fun and assembled there. As if taunting her, they reminded Yashoda of their complaints. Has this thief done something mischievous in your home also? They laughed. Why? Because before they used to come and say, Oh, Krishna is stealing butter, this and that. They would even try to catch Krishna and bring him. But it always failed. Mother Yashoda never really believed them. But now, they are saying, Oh, oh, this thief is now stolen from your house. And they are saying, See, we were telling the truth before. You didn't believe her. But now, you see, he's even stealing from your own house. Mother Yashoda, however, was bent on teaching her son a lesson, so she paid no heed to their remarks. Snatching up a silk ribbon that had fallen from her braid, she immediately began binding her son's waist to a grinding mortar, lying in the courtyard, with the same persistence it takes to bind the neck of a cat. But that silk ribbon was two fingers too short. You try to bind them. Any animal, you try to put a collar on them or try they're always resisting. They don't want. Why? Because they don't have hands. How could they can't take it off, right? <laughs> Once their collar is loose or the collar is on their neck, then they are stuck. So they always resist. So, so in order to bind the calf, you have to be a little persistent. You don't give up just on the first try or the second try. You have to do it till you get it. So Mother Yashoda is now also trying to bind Krishna. The same persistence means she wants to bind Krishna. I'm definitely going to bind Krishna. But that silk ribbon was two fingers too short. She took another ribbon from her hair and joined it to the first one. But still the same problem confronted her. Amazed, she then tried to bind Krishna's waist with several churning ropes that the gopis handed her. But still Rajeshwari could not make up the gap of two fingers. From a distance, a cloud that is actually touching the peak of a mountain may be mistakenly perceived as being quite far beyond it. In a similar sense, Although the full length of rope was actually touching Sri Krishna, he could not bind his apparently tiny waist. The rope was always two fingers too short. So sometimes you may see, oh, the cloud is touching the mountain, but actually it is. Oh no, it's touching it, but it actually is far away. It seems, oh, it is very close, but it is far. Like even a mirage, you think, oh, it is very nearby, but actually it is always out, it is out of your reach. Because it's the, the, the optical illusion is there. Observing this, the ladies of Raj laughed and remarked, Oh, Rajeshwari, we already told you that this boy surely has some extraordinary illusory potency. On account of it, he even surpasses Kap Halak, the foremost among thieves. He seems to be satisfied simply by eating stolen goods, or by such acts he delights both the don donors of those goods and the enjoyers of them. He is gradually gaining quite a reputation as one who steals another's possessions. Here in the footnote he said that just as the cloud may appear to be far beyond the mountain's peak when seen from a distance, it appeared to everyone present there that there was so much rope being used to bind Sri Krishna that it could not possibly have all been touching his waist. However, just as the cloud is actually touching the mountain, the full length of the rope was actually touching Sri Krishna's waist. But no length of rope could equally could equal the actual circumference of his waist, because the truth is, it is unlimited. As far as this thief, this cup, Halak, he must be some very famous thief, but he is not mentioned in the footnote who he is, but he might be some very famous thief who is there, notorious in Vedic history. Jim Goswami has quoted his name here. And he would even, the, the Gopis are saying, even he is more than this cup halak. He's such a thief. Mother Yasha responded, What does this recently born child know about being a thief? He does not know good from bad, but it seems that you are the ones who, are, who know some evil trickery. Although you actually favor him externally, you, act, you behave in a contrary way. So, oh, you, even though you, externally you seem to, you say that externally you are now behaving in a contrary way. If you are speaking against him, you are calling him a thief. But reality, how is he a thief? He 
He's so innocent. He don't know really what he's good, what he's bad. He's such, he's such a small child. How can we call him a thief? At this, the ladies laughed. Oh, respect to Shia Shaddam. They say, we take an oath at your feet that we have nothing to do with these astonishing powers. Finally, Yashoda reasoned, as Sri Gargacharya said, surely some potency of Sri Bhagavan surrounds my son. This infant boy cannot know what he is doing. Just to put an end to this bewilderment, Yashoda repeatedly called for more and more training ropes from the homes of those gopis. Despite her persistence in her endeavor to bind her son, she could not find any way to accomplish that seemingly impossible task. Instead, Yashoda, the Queen of Raj, dripped with perspiration and curls of hair from fell over her face again and again. Finally, she became completely exhausted. As long as Sri Krishna, who was born in the Yadu dynasty, stubbornly refused to be bound, Mother Yashoda's persistent efforts were fruitless, just as one whose fate is grasped by an unfavorable star. It's always unsuccessful in his endeavors. In other words, if it is not in your chart, not in your bhagya, in your fortune to achieve something, doesn't matter how much you try, it will always evade you. So similarly, Krishna, it was not in Yashoda's fate to bind Krishna. Therefore, assuming she was always being unsuccessful. Finally, Sri Krishna's heart was touched by the sight of his mother being so overwhelmed and almost immediately she successfully bound him with the two ribbons she had initially used from her hair. It was clear to all present that it was only these two ribbons that bound Sri Krishna. The other ropes she had used to tie him simply lay there. It was actually Sri Krishna's maid servant, his yoga maya potency, who had understood his mind and accomplished the task of finding him. This made Mother Yashoda feel that all those astonishing activities of Sri Krishna were an illusion. When the rope was finally tied tightly around Sri Krishna's waist, Mother Yashoda knotted it to another long rope, which she, did, which she tied around the middle of the grinding mortar. In other words, she first tied the ribbon around his waist, then she tied another rope to that ribbon around the grinding mortar. So Jim Goswami is clarified here. She had taught her son Krishna a lesson by tying him up and thus showed him how unmoved she could be by his stubbornness. To protect him, she seated the other little boys around him and happily went inside with the giggling gopis to complete her household chores. She tied him up and then the other sucker the boys she put there. Okay, now you play together here. And they went inside. So we'll finish here and this verse 8 I'll respect and you receive after me Devi Dukkha Kula Sagarodare Duyamana Ati Durgatam Janam Twam Kripa Rabala Nauka Yadbutam Prabaya Swa Pada Pankajalayam O oh Devi, please rescue this unfortunate person drowning in an ocean of pain. Place him on the strong boat of your mercy and carry him to the wonderful realm of your lotus feet. Shri Gurudev's commentary. The fire burning in dust was on his heart. We have discussed that there are two kinds of prema bhakti. One is sambhog and the other is vipralamba. And without vipralamba we cannot enter into raganuga bhakti. There are two types of bhav in raganuga bhakti and especially in ragatmik bhakti. One, Sarak Uchitta Bhav and two Siddha Uchitta Bhav. Shri Raghunath Asusami and all the six Kosamis have both. In a Sarak Bhav is Raghunath Asusami. When he is praying to Srimati Radhika, we can understand that he is in Siddha Bhav. If a person has big greed, then even in his Sarak body, he can also pray like this. And he should pray like this. In other words, even though if you are not Siddha, but you are Siddha simply a Sarak, should pray like the Siddhas, repeat their prayers, have a greed for that mood, and then some of that bhav by their mercy may manifest in your heart. If a person has Siddha bhav, if internally he is already situated in his Siddha Sarup, then he can pray in his Siddha Sarup also. 
दुख को लसा करो नरे वगुनाथ आसु समय इस फीलिंग दैट ही इज ड्राउनिंग इन एन ओशन ऑफ मिसरी व्हाट इज हिज मिसरी ही इज थिंकिंग आई एम नॉट सीइंग श्रीमती राधिका हिज अनहैप्पीनेस लाइज इन द ऑब्स्टिकल्स दैट आर प्रिवेंटिंग हिम फ्रॉम ऑब्टेनिंग हर दर्शन आवर ऑब्स्टिकल्स आर डिफरेंट we want to keep our minds always thinking of shrimati radhika seva but we are unable to do so for example there are so many duties we must perform sometimes we are attacked by illness there are so many obstacles in our continuous remembrance and we are unable to remove them this is our misery a person may be in somewhat higher grade of bhakti but he may not have the sangha association which he can hear or speak about these subjects He has no real asakti as described in Sri Lavishna chapter twenty five, verse Madhuri Kadamini. He has no asakti in bhav avastha. Do yamana mati durgatam janam. Here, do yamana means immense distress. A fire is burning in the heart of Raghunath Dasuswami. He is angry. I am not taking darshan of Sri Mati Radhika of Raj. We go to Raj, but we are not in Raj. Vrindavan. We go to Radha Kund, but we are not at Radha Kund. In our present condition, we have no real greed. But those who are siddha, who realize all these things, suffer greatly. There will be some imitation in our hearts, but there is no possibility at all of imitation in theirs. In other words, their prayers are generally coming from their heart. We try to imitate. We try to follow in the footsteps of Guru Varga, and sometimes we are able to pray. With some mood, sometimes we are praying and it is there is no mood at all. But our Guru Bhargava, when they are praying, it is always full of deep lamentation, deep mood. Shri Madhi Radhika can really weep for Krishna, but it is very difficult for us to weep for him. Here, Raghunath Das Kusami is realizing the misery of not seeing or serving Shri Madhi Radhika. We can also weep that at present we have no chance to enter this Raghunath Bhajan in any way. It may be that a sadhak would have darshan of Radhika, as in Purvara. Although he is not seeing the Radhika, Rupa Mandiri, Rati Mandiri, or Krishna, a sadhak can have Purvara. There is separation before meeting. At present, we at present we might experience Purvara of Haas, a semblance of Purvara. We might, if it will enter our hearts, we should understand ourselves to be very fortunate. In other words. Even before meeting with Radha and Krishna, if you feel some separation for them, then you can understand this is some abhas, some abhas of purvara, and your life is very successful. If that even 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 if a semblance of that mood comes to your heart, because real purvara is experienced when only when prem awakens. It's not possible to experience purvara in this sadhak body. But if we can experience a semblance of that, then we should consider ourselves very fortunate. But it should be shuddha, pure, not imitation. Even that abhas would be very good. In the early morning, the sun is about to rise and the darkness is going away. This is abhas. Means you cannot see the sun, but there is already light in the sky. That is called abhas. Means the sun is just about to emerge. In other words, very soon, the original, the, the sun itself will be there. So in purva rag abhas. This is the stage just before that true purva rag or that flame is a man twisting in the heart. That means very soon now, all success and perfection will come. Similarly, if we experience that abhas, we will be so fortunate. Our suffering, however, is that certainly we are in total darkness, and we can only cry for all our nartas and aparats to go away and to have real grief. This is our problem. Tvam kripa prabhala nauka yag bhutam. Raghunath Das Goswami is praying to Radhika. I am drowning in an ocean of unhappiness. In this world, I see no hope at all. I can only see your mercy. Shri Madhi Radhika's mercy is like a very good boat, and it is adbhutam, wonderful. How wonderful is her mercy! In Shri Mad Bhagavatam, it has been stated that the mercy of Krishna's lotus feet is like a boat. If we need this boat, it will come to our shore. If we simply take that boat within our minds, we will see that we have gone across the ocean of material existence. Oh, that in other words, if you accept Krishna's mercy, then easily we can cross over this ocean of suffering. Although the boat is still lying on this side as it waits for others to cross, still we have crossed over to the other side. Shri Madhya Radhika's kripa is even greater than that. 
We see in the Brihad Mahavita, which is that Gokuma took birth in Braj and was practicing bhakti there. And Shimadhi Radhika sent her near and dear associate Jayanta to be his guru. That means which Braj is this perfect Braj? He was a Gopa, Braj Vasi. Then Radhika sent Jayanta to deliver him. If one is very simple hearted and has great ruchi for his bhajan, then Radhika may send one of her associates. Or she or Krishna may even come themselves. This is the kripa of Srimati Radhika. Prabhayasa Pada Pankajalayam. So I pray to you that by your mercy I can get the seva of your feet. I see no other way. We will finish here today and we'll continue tomorrow. Gaurmananda Hare Hare Riva Jai Shukuru Pada Padma Ki Jai Guru Parampara Ki Jai Sachinandam Gaur Hare Ki Jai Saparasada Gaur Hare Ki Jai